The clinical test for sensory interaction on balance is a test that actually assesses a person's ability to integrate the three sensory systems that we use to help hold our balance. We use primarily three senses, our vision, our vestibular, and our somatosensory system. The CAT-SIB is actually a test that then changes or modifies the sensory conditions that a patient is placed in. When we complete the test, we're looking for several variables. One of those is the amount of time that it takes or that a person's able to maintain their position, and normal is 30 seconds. We're also looking for the amount of sway that a person has and or if they're unable to actually hold a position, it would start to fall. The CAT-SIB is actually the low-tech version of computerized posturography. For condition one, the person is actually standing with their feet apart with their arms at their side comfortably with their eyes open. Now in this condition, she has her vision available and it's accurate. She has her somatosensation sensation available and accurate. And she also has her vestibular system available and accurate. In this condition, normals primarily use their somatosensation sensation to help hold their balance. In condition two, she's going to keep her feet in the same place and she's going to close her eyes. Now we've actually removed her vision, so her vision is unavailable for her to use as part of her senses to help hold her balance. She continues to have somatization and vestibular, so she will primarily use her somatic sensation in this condition. Go ahead and open up your eyes. For condition three, was originally designed to use a Chinese lantern that would be placed over the patient's head. This provided a visual conflict because the patient was asked to keep their eyes open. When there's a visual conflict, the patient then would rely, have to rely more on their vestibular sense to help hold them upright. This currently is not utilized in the clinic because research has shown that as a clinician, we didn't really get any more additional information. For condition four now, we're actually going to change the surface. So this is going to change the amount of somatosensory information that the patient has. Let's go ahead and step up on that phone. Now, in this condition, her somatosensory information is available. She's getting information, but it's inaccurate. It's not giving her good information like when she was standing on the firm surface. Again, she has her eyes open, so vision is available and accurate, and her vestibular system is available and accurate. In this condition, vision is going to dominate. For the next condition, condition 5, I'm going to have her close her eyes, so vision is no longer available. Her somatosensory is available, but it's inaccurate so she has to rely on her vestibular system to help hold her balance. You notice that there's an increased amount of sway, and this is due to the fact that she just has one system that's primarily working to help keep her upright. Go ahead and open up your eyes. Condition six was again, I would have used the Chinese lantern to place over her head and again provide that visual conflict. Again, this typically is not used in the clinic. You can go ahead and step off of the phone. The CATSIB, again, is a test that assesses the person's ability to integrate the three senses that we use to help hold our balance. Patients, patients typically do very well if only one of the sensory systems is missing. However, they have increased difficulty when two out of the three sensory systems are missing or unavailable. Patients with vestibular disorders, if I have a vestibular hypofunction and I already have that system at a disadvantage, it makes sense then that if I stand on a piece of foam and disadvantage my somatosensory system, that I will have increased difficulty with those tasks.